In this video segment for the Grandview Build House for Homes project, we're going to go through the process of creating the roof. I'm going to start out with identifying the key settings to create the roof. We'll go through and use the automatic build roof tools to generate the roof as far along as we can. Then I'm going to switch over to using the manual roof tools. And then finally, we're going to take a look at placing both a structural dormer and a floating dormer or a false dormer. I have the completed model open. You can see the different aspects of the roof. As I rotate around here a little bit, you can see that we have a number of gables. Some of the areas are in a raised area. If I toggle on the glass house view, it allows you to see the different components of the roof. I'm going to go through and show you the different ways you can build the roof and leverage really the automatic tools and then we'll go in and use the manual tools to finish this up. As the video series has been progressing, we built the foundation, the main floor, and the second floor. And you'll notice that this raised area in the living room through here, that's three feet above. That's a 12-foot ceiling. The main ceiling down in this area is a nine-foot ceiling. And then our second floor is embedded partially down with a eight-foot ceiling with a garage lowered 24 inches. Now where I'm going to start is the automatic roof tool. In the build menu, you'll find a roof setting for build roof. Now there are a variety of styles you can use to create your roof that are built into the program. Let's explore beginning with the roof panel. And first of all, I'm going to choose to automatically have the roof rebuilt as we make changes to the model. My pitch I'm going to specify is at 8 and 12. My overhang information. I'm going to make sure that I'm actually going to build with trusses and then as a result of that if you build your roofs you may have automatic bird's mouth cut out. I'm going to actually come in here and specify that I'm going to raise this off the plate at 12 inches to allow for an energy heal in the in the roof itself. With these settings let's let the program go ahead and generate the roof. The program generates an automatic roof. As you look around you can kind of see how the roof is laid out mainly with all hip conditions. What I want to do is let's focus on the area for the balcony. Let me select inside the room. On the structure panel inside the room specification, if I check the option to have a roof over this, let's see what the roof looks like as it generates. Since we have the automatic roof generation on, it will automatically create that roof structure over the top of the balcony. By clicking on the railing itself, you'll see a tool for walls or railings where you can actually convert that to a full gable. If you look down in the lower edit menu and I toggle that, it will then adjust the roof accordingly. Now for a portion of this balcony, I actually want to turn off the roof area in here and I want to allow the program to do that automatically and use the power of the program to do it. Let's go over into our plan view. On the second floor, I'm going to come in and I'm going to use a tool called the room divider, snap onto the edge of the wall and come down to the railing. What I'm doing here is I'm creating room definition. If I click inside of this area, I now have room definition. You can tell by the shaded area. And on this side, I also have room definition. Back in the room structure panel itself, for this portion of the balcony, I'm going to actually remove the roof out of the balcony area. And you can see the result where it's removed the roof out of here, pulled the roof back over the main wall. And then in back in the 3D view, you can see the effect of pulling that roof back off of the balcony. Again, using the wall and room tools to make that automatically happen. Next, let's come over to the far side of the design, click on the outside of the wall, toggle that onto a full gable wall. And I'm just going to kind of rotate around the design and we'll make a few changes. I'm going to come back in and I'll show you how to change this attic wall back into a shake wall. And again, I'll just select this wall over here, convert that to a full gable wall. And then around the back side, let's go ahead and do the same thing. Now, if you open up the wall, that same setting is under the roof panel. And by checking that it's a full gable wall, you can accomplish the same change. Go ahead and rotate around on this side. I want to take this little area right here, also select the wall, convert that to a full gable wall. Let's go ahead and rotate around to the front of the house. And I want to take this entryway and also convert this entryway to a full gable area. Let me go into the plan view since this is actually an invisible wall that has raised up and created a roof over here in the plan view. You'll see the porch that I've highlighted here. I'm going to select the wall right in this front area and convert that to a gable wall. Now when I do this, take a look at what happened to the roof. In the plan view, it is not connecting into this side very well. And back in the 3D view, it might look a little interesting. Let's take a look. You can see that that connection didn't work out the, really the way that I want it to work out. 
and rather than using the manual tools to make the adjustment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this area right here for the balcony area and I'm going to create a little jog over here because the wall connection is really having a difficult time right in this area. Let's go back over to the floor plan on floor two. On this railing wall, I'm going to create a little jog in here so that that wall connection can work its way out. When I turn the automatic roofs off, I'll remove the jog. So in the meantime, I'm just going to use the brake tool right in this area right here and select this wall. I'm going to pull it over maybe just uh, maybe four or five inches and then we'll go ahead and connect it back in creating just a small jog. Let's go back into the 3D view and take a look at the result. Simply by creating this jog right in this area, it allowed that wall intersection to work out. And again, when I turn off the automatic roofs to make a few changes here at the end, we'll go ahead and, and pull that back out. Now the next area I want to focus on for the roof is creating a wall right above our entryway that will be a solid wall. I'm going to go up into our second floor plan over here. Let's toggle on by pressing F9 on the keyboard. See where that wall area is. We have an invisible wall, which in your 3D view would be the front of this concrete slab. I'm going to use the exterior wall tool, and I'm just going to draw a wall right over the top of this, and then we'll come in here and change that default wall type to a shake siding. Let's go ahead and open it up. And on the wall panels type, let's go ahead and change that to a shake siding. You can see that I'm using a different wall hatch for that style of wall. The next thing I want to do for that entryway, you can see I have a slight arch above that. And the, the method that I've used is to actually use a doorway in here and put a thick casing on it with an arch on it. Let me show you the process I've used to create that. Underneath the door tool, I'm going to go ahead and select the doorway. I'm going to come in here, snap onto the center of that wall, place the doorway. You can see in the 3D view, my default doorway is uh, probably a typical 6-8 door. Let's open that up and make some changes to it. I'm going to set the width to be 160, and then the height of it, let's go ahead and set it to be 12 inches. That 12 inch height, let's come down to the arch. Let's also put a 12 inch arch in here using a broken type arch at the 12 inches. And then back on to the casing, I want to make this casing that you see in the preview. Let's go ahead and change that casing. And I'm going to set the width of that casing to be 8 inches. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my manual roof tools. If I select this roof, I want to actually tuck this underneath, partly underneath here. Over here in the floor plan view, you can see that part of the roof, which is generated on the second floor over here, is showing on the second floor, and the remainder of the roof is being displayed on the main floor. There's a tool that I like to use to s display all of the roof planes up on one floor. And I'm just going to choose to display all those roof planes since the majority of my house roof is on floor one. I'm going to pull those roof planes. Let's maximize this view. I'm going to pull those roof planes from floor two down onto floor one. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select my roof plane tool. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm just going to draw a marquee around all of the roof planes that I want to select. When they are highlighted down here in the edit menu, there is a tool down here if I mouse over the top of it that will say display the roof planes on the floor below. After I select that button on floor two you see no roof planes and when you go down to the first floor all of the roof planes are being displayed. Now let's go ahead and zoom into this area where we want to pull this roof plane back. Let's highlight this roof section in here. You can see the wall below which is a thin gray line and all I'm going to do is pull that roof in just a little ways. So I'm just going to slide that just a little ways past the wall so we have a little bit of an overhang. After making that adjustment to the roof, let's go ahead and take a look at it. And you can see that we've created that solid wall with a shape inside of there and we've also tucked the roof back in. Now over here in this area for this wall, let's go ahead and make that change to the wall type. Let's open it up, change the wall type again to that shake siding. And again, that change in here, what I'm going to end up doing, you can see in the finished model, I'm going to put a belly band across the top of those two wall materials. I'm going to draw a decorative arched beam in here. Also come back and I'm going to put these columns in to support the, the upper roof. And then I'll also come in here and support the deck balcony and the roof that's extending over that area. First, I'm going to go ahead and place those columns. I built these columns using polyline solids, blocked them together, and added them into my library. I'm going to browse out to my library. In my user catalog underneath the Grandview project, I have a column entry. Again, this consists of three different components, a base layer. Again, that's a polyline solid with stone applied to it, a cap, which is also a polyline solid. And then this is actually a millwork column found in the library.
and then I'll go ahead and place one more on this side. Now the next step is to create a belly band and a decorative beam above the master bedroom right in this area. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into the floor plan view and generate an elevation view just using my elevation camera. I'm just going to come in here and draw an elevation camera. And then I'll just kind of zoom in right on this area that we want to generate that belly band and decorative beam. Now typically the way I generate those belly bands for something like this is just to use a polyline solid. I'm going to just come in here and draw a polyline solid right across this area right in here. Once I have that positioned, I'm just going to use the material eyedropper, pick up the color off of the fascia, and apply it on there. Sometimes you'll need to go into the plan view. I'll put those on a particular layer and then position them in a plan view. In this case, when I drew this, it came in on the CAD default. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put that on a molding layer, come down here, find the moldings, and I've created a layer called Moldings Exterior. Once I put that on that layer, it makes it easier for me to isolate and turn on and off. Now the next thing I'm going to do, let me zoom in a little bit closer. I'm going to draw that decorative beam right in this area. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use the line tool and just draw a line. And I'm going to temporarily change this line to be a uh, bright color so you'll be able to see it. I'm just going to go into my defaults real quickly under the current CAD layer. Let's define that. And instead of the uh, black color, let's set this to be a uh, bright color. You'll be able to see it on the screen here. So I'm just going to draw a line right through here. When the line is selected, there's a tool down here called Change Line to Arc. Then you'll find a small adjustment handle in here. It's a small diamond. You can pull this down, make adjustments to it. And then I'm going to open up that line and specify the radius and make sure I lock the cord. I'm going to change that radius to be exactly 380 on that radius. Now I'm going to use the copy tool down here and I'm going to slide a copy of this down about 8 inches. Let's just pull that down, press the tab key. I'm going to set that beam width to be or depth to be 8 inches. And then again with the line tool or a W on the keyboard, it's a shortcut to the line tool. I'm just going to pull that up, snap it onto the upper line in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to pull this up, pull it straight up. And I'll need to zoom in just a little bit, make sure that's connected, and see if I have a closed polyline, which would show by the shading in here. And now I can use this conversion tool down in the edit menu called convert to a polyline. And I'm just going to choose to convert it to a polyline solid. It's the same tool we use to create the belly band down here. And then the uh, polyline solid specification comes up. I'm going to go ahead and enter in a 5.5 inches in thickness, and we'll go ahead and close that dialog. Using the material eyedropper, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the color off of the fascia again, apply it onto that curve. And one of the things is there's a lot of facets in that curve. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll select this edge on the lower section right here, and there is a tool down here to convert that to more segments. It's called Convert Curve to a Polyline. And a lot of times I'll just increase that. Let's go ahead and put it at 60. That will smooth that edge out significantly. Let's select the other edge down here and we'll do the same thing. And again, I'll just use the same number of uh, 60 surfaces, make that very smooth. And then I'm just going to use the move handle in here and kind of position this approximately where I want. And then we'll change that line in here from the pink back to a black so our elevations um, look crisp. And then I may need to make some minor adjustments. So just kind of pull this beam over slightly. It was a little bit sloppy when I drew it. And then we'll just kind of pull that in. Again, I might put that on the same layer as I did that belly band. So we'll come down here and find the moldings exterior. And we'll go ahead and position that in our plan view. In the plan view, let's just kind of position that, pull it out. Also put a little bit of a shading on it. And then we'll go back into the elevation view. Now the other thing you can do is you can go into your build menu underneath the trim and place corner boards. Let's go ahead and place a couple of corner boards here. I'll place one more on this side. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place our supporting posts for the deck balcony. I'm going to use the post tool to support the balcony. You'll find that underneath the framing menu called post. And I'm just going to come over here in the plan view and I'm going to click and place a post right in this area over the top of the deck newel. Once that post is placed, let's go ahead and modify that. I want to set it up to be a five and a half by five and a half post. Then I'll just adjust the height of that over here in the elevation view. We'll just pull it up. And then using the material painter, let's go ahead and take an eye drop off of the same color off of that door and apply it onto that post. Select the post and I'm going to use the copy and reflect tool around the center here. And then the final thing is to get that decorative beam over here. 
I just used the exact same process as when we drew that decorative beam on the far right hand side over the master bedroom to generate that decorative beam. In the next section of the video, I'm going to go through and place two dormers. The dormer on the left is a floating dormer, just sits on the top of the roof for decorative purposes. And the dormer on the right is above the office area and actually goes into the room. Now in the 3D view, I'm actually on the attic level, which is important because when I place the dormer on the roof in this area, it's going to get placed on the attic. In the plan view, you can see the second floor and right in this area is where I want that dormer to be placed, but I want it to be up in the attic area. I've kind of marked an area that I wanted to position it and I'm just going to do that in the 3D view. Now before I place the dormer, I'm going to go through and double click on the dormer, make sure that I have all the settings correct. The wall types are going to be shake. The height is going to be 36. The width is going to be 10 feet. The roof style is going to be a shed style and a 2 and 12 pitch. It just makes it easier to have these settings in place before you actually place the dormer. Next, I'm just going to come over here and click on the roof where I want the dormer to be placed. You can see the automatic dormer has included one very large window. Let's make modifications to that. Let's go ahead and change the width of it to be 30 and then the height to be 22. Change it to be a fixed window and then on the grid pattern, let's come in and change that to normal with a 2x2. Two two. I'll go ahead and slide that over to the edge and then I'm going to go ahead and use the multiple copy tool and let's load in a value of 32 inches. We'll copy that a couple of times over here and then you can group select those mullum and center it on the dormer itself. Now to position that dormer exactly, let's go into the floor plan view. Up in the attic, there's a location for that dormer. It's supposed to be 18, 10 and a half off the side. I'm going to go ahead and just select the dormer. Maybe have to press the tab key to get it. Let's go ahead and use the center tool down here in the lower edit menu and I'll just center that right over that. And now we have that dormer exactly positioned where you want to have it on the roof plane. Let's go ahead and slide over here. Let's talk about the next dormer that will actually go through into the ceiling below for the office. In addition to the dormer actually going through the ceiling and the roof, it's slightly wider. Let's go in and set the change to the dormer to be 144 inches or 12 feet and we'll place that dormer right in this area. Now before I make modifications to the window, let's go into the floor plan view and position it. I already have a grid line set up for it. I'm just going to select the dormer itself. I'm going to use a center tool centered on that line which is already very close. We'll position it and then we'll go back into the camera view and adjust the windows. And I'll just set the width of these slightly larger at 36 and then the same height at 22. And then I'll slide that window over and again I'm going to use the multiple copy tool. We'll load the value of 38 in the multiple copy and then we'll go ahead and slide a couple of copies of that window over in this direction. While they're all selected, I'll go ahead and create a mold unit and then center them on top of that dormer. The final thing I want to do with this dormer, if I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see shingles underneath of the dormer. I need to cut a whole platform through the dormer. I'm going to go in to the plan view. That dormer was placed up on the attic, which you can see right here. I'm just going to draw a marquee around here and snap in to where that dormer is. And that's going to create the whole area that I need. And I'm going to go ahead and just take and copy that. Let's go ahead and copy it. I'm going to go down to floor one where the roof is displayed and let's go ahead and edit paste hold position. That will paste that rectangle right in the same area. While it's still selected, I'm going to go through and convert that using the convert to polyline. One of the options is to create a hole in the roof or custom ceiling. Let's go ahead and choose that. I'll accept all of the defaults with that. And then back in the 3D view, you no longer see the shingles in here. When I get to the ceilings video section, I'm going to go ahead and create a custom ceiling in that area. One final thing on those dormers, let's go ahead and open up our material painter and let's change the material to a standing sink. I'll just scroll down and find the uh, midnight color and then we'll apply those to the two roof panels. You can kind of see the, uh, the way the roof lays out. That wraps up the roof section for the Grandview build house. We went through and defined what the settings were for the roof, defining it as an 8 and 12 pitch with an energy heel. We then went through and used the automatic tools to generate a hip roof, used the toggle option to convert several of those roof planes to full gable walls, and then we actually used the wall and room tools to allow the automatic tools to generate the roof to save us a little bit of time. And then finally, once we finished with all of the automatic tools, we used a few of the manual tools to make the adjustments. And then finally, we placed a couple of the shed dormers.